Hi guys, welcome today to this lesson on area under a graph. Those of you who have me in the room, yes, those are the questions I need you to do. But otherwise, hey, welcome. Thanks very much for joining me. Today is our lesson on left endpoint and right endpoint instruments, and it is fabulously exciting. Right, but let's recap. We always like to start with a recap. Let's go back and find out what it was we did previously, and by this I mean in year six to ten. All right, so look at this function. We have the equation y is equal to x minus two, and it says find the area between where the line x equals two is and the line x equals six. So there's my line x equals two, and there's my line x equals six. And lo and behold, if I was to look at that under the function and uh, between those two points, and I think it's inferred that it's actually going to be in the x-axis as well, then what I'm looking for is just an area colored in green. Yes, I know, this is rather basic, isn't it? Because there we go, what do we notice? We have a right angle triangle, and to find the area under a right angle triangle, I do a half base times height, or height times base, doesn't actually matter. All right, so what is the base width? Uh, that would be four units, so a half times four, and we would know that my height there is also four, which gives me eight units squared. Now, a lot of people say to me, do I have to write the words units? Well, actually, my advice to you is yes, 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 yes. You're trying to find out what an area is. So writing eight doesn't make any sense. And you certainly couldn't write eight squared because if you wrote eight squared, which is actually 64, that would be well and truly wrong. And remember, methods is a course that looks to deduct your marks for poor notation. So in this situation, eight units squared, although that seems to read sintits squared. All right. So that's awesome. Nice and easy. Triangle. But what about if we wanted to find the area between where the points x equals 0 and x equals 6 is? All right, so let's go back to my diagram. x equals 0, this is this line here. Well, that's not that difficult, because what I'm effectively trying to find now is the area I had before, plus this little area here. So let's call this area 1, and I'm going to say that's area 1. And so to find area 2, which is once again a triangle, a half base times height, which is a half, my base is two units, my height is two units, no, it's not minus two, it's two, I know that's going down to minus two, but it's just looking for the height. And so two times two is four, and there is two units squared. Is that the end of my answer? No, because I want to find the total area. And so the total area, ladies and gentlemen, for this question would be total, would be equal to eight plus two, which is 10 units squared. All right, nice and easy. Yes, if we know how to find the areas of basic shapes, then life is really, really good for us. Yes, absolutely. And that's the process we use today to help us find areas under, uh, well, under what? Because we've got straight lines. Well, if it's not straight, it's going to be curved, hasn't it, Leo, in it? So, how do we find areas under curves? Well, let's take this one as an example. Let's zoom it in so that it fits into all of the screen. So we have an equation here with uh, the function or y is equal to x squared plus 3. Nice and easy function, but I don't know about you. How would I find the area of this? Well, it's limited between 0 and 3, so it seems to suggest we want to go between 0 and 3. Thank you very much, Darren, for doing it just between the sort of sections. So it's actually this whole area here. Hmm... Well, that doesn't look to be a nice shape there. I suppose I could join these two together, and that would give me a trapezium. So if I looked at that trapezium, I would know that this y value here was 12. I know that this y value here is 3. And how do you find the area of a trapezium? You do a half, you add the two parallels together, so let's call it h1 plus h2 in this situation, and times it by the width. Well, the width would be 3, so that's a half times 12 plus 3 times by 3. And I'm not actually going to go any further because, well, that would be one massive overestimate. Why would it be an overestimate? Well, look at all of that massive area there. But trapeziums <clears throat> might be a way to go. How can I make this more accurate? Well, at the moment, I have an interval of three units. That seems a fairly massive interval. So could I now make it slightly better? Well, absolutely. So why don't I do intervals of 0 0.5? There we go. Boink, 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 and boink. All right. I don't know what the word boink means, but it works for me. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different areas. There's area one, area two, area three, area four, area five, and area six. Drawing my trapezium, there's one trapezium, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, and there's six trapeziums. And so, for this shape one, I could find area one by now doing 
Well, a half times the height. Well, I know this height here is nice and easy to find out because it's three, and it just so happens that I've already worked out the height previously of the other one, which was 3.25, and now I'm gonna times it by a width of 0 0.5. And I could go on and repeat this for all of the rest of the shapes. Wow, this would be a lot, lot closer to my actual answer for my area. Would it be an overestimate or would it be an underestimate? Well, my advice here is if we were to zoom in massively on this, each section and actually draw, oops, the, co uh, the trapezium, then I'd find out that actually my line would go above the curve. And so this would be a small, I'm gonna use the word small, overestimate. But trapeziums are not nice, all right? Look at all that formulas I've got to work out. Oh, I could get my values wrong, blah, 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 blah. So actually not the most useful to use. But what would be the simplest shape I could work out the areas for? Hello, nurse. Oh, yes, it would probably be a rectangle. So actually this whole lesson deals with the idea of re rectangles. What's this left endpoint and right endpoint estimate business? Well, actually, as it turns out, if you think about a rectangle, our rectangle will be defined by a height on this side, or it can be defined by a height on that side. And you're gonna turn around and say, well, hold on a minute, dude, that's the same height. Mm, yes, it is, but not when we're finding areas under curves. So let's call this my left endpoint, and let's call this my right endpoint. And let's use the idea to find left endpoints. So first things first, I'm gonna try and split this shape into rectangles. Well, I've already got this idea of splitting things into intervals of a half. So there are my intervals of a half. How do I now make rectangles out of this? Well, using the left endpoint, I'm gonna actually draw my rectangles like this. And you're gonna to say to me, but why? That doesn't make any sense. Patience, patience, patience. So I now have the left endpoint of each of my uh, rectangles just touching the curve. That's touching there, it's 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 touching there, and it's touching there. So using the basic idea now of area, how do I find the area of shape number one? Well, it would be the height on this side multiplied by the width on that side. Now you're gonna say height on that side. Again, this will make sense when we get to the right endpoint estimate. So can I find the height of this one here? Yes, it's three, and do I know my width? It's 0 0.5. So area number one now becomes three times 0 0.5. Oh, thank you very much. How do I find area two? Well, again, this point here, I happen to know is 3.25. And you're gonna say, what do you mean it's 3.25? Remember, the equation y equals x squared plus three is just another way of saying, find the height of the rectangle at a particular point. I know that the x value here is 0 0.5, and if I just double check with my calculator, turning on my calculator, I do 0 0.5 to the power of two, add three to it, gives me 3.25. So 3.25. So this one here now is 3.25 high, 3.25, and again, it has a width of 0 0.5. So to find area two, I would do three times zero, uh, sorry, three times, no, I would do 3.25 times 0 0.5. What about area three? Again, I would use this point here, which would give me four times 0 0.5. What about the fourth area? Well, the fourth area has to have this point here. So that has an X value of 1.5. So if I do 1.5 squared, add three to that, gives me 5.25, 5.25 times 0 0.5. And I would continue until I've got all six areas. Then what would I do? Well, I would add all of my individual areas together and that would give me my left endpoint estimate. In an exam, not that I imagine for a moment I'll ask you to do this, but you might be asked whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate. Well, hopefully in this situation, you'll realize that it's actually an underestimate. Why is it an underestimate? Well, if you think about all of these areas here that I'm doing with dots, then what you actually find out is that they are below the curve, and as such, you're gonna miss each of those areas. Can we make this more accurate? Well, of course we can make it more accurate. I'll explain how in just a moment. That's the left endpoint estimate. 
What about this right endpoint estimate? Well, again, now we've got to go back to the idea that I'm going to try and make my right side of my rectangle touch the curve. That's literally all it is. So again, here are the points at each of my uh, intervals. These are the y values I'm going to be interested in. Still has the same equation of x squared plus 3. Now I'm going to draw line, 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 and line in my best Australian. And now I want my right point. So I want my rectangle to effectively end there. And so, nice and beautifully, I really should have been an artist. I have my rectangles looking like this. So this is my first area I would be looking for, my second area I'd be looking for, my third area, and so on. So there's area one, area two, and area three. So I suppose the question is, well, how do we find this? Again, you need to be very, very careful not to make a silly mistake. If we look at area one, it's actually this height we are looking for and the width. So it's this point here which I happen to know, because I've done this like 27 times now, is a height of 3.25. So area 1 now is actually given as 3.25 times 0 0.5. Still keeping the width, or well, my interval is 0 0.5. The next one, area 2, will be given as 4 times 0 0.5, and area 3, and so it goes on. Now, again, I'm not going to necessarily work this one out at this moment in time. Actually, I am in a minute. But... What you need to be aware of is that in this situation, if you were asked in an exam whether it was an overestimate or an underestimate, hopefully you'll all be aware that this would be an overestimate. Why would it be an overestimate? Well, because all of the points I'm now doing dots in are above the curve, and so you'd actually have too much area. If you ever wanted to try and get an answer that was roughly close to sort of it, then what I would actually be doing is doing the left endpoint and doing that calculation, that remember would give me an underestimate. I would have my right endpoint method, which would give me my overestimate. And then if you did my left endpoint plus my right endpoint and then divided that by two, then absolutely yes, you could then end up with a better approximation. All right, there's lots of different ways of doing this. Actually, I could also have drawn a dot there and ended up with trying to find that rectangle where this area here and this area here would sort of compensate each other. Anyway, long story, very complicated to try and do it that way, but possible. So uh, let's actually work out what the area is of this actual shape. Right, so bringing up my dots here, let's see what I come up with. And I'm just going to fast forward through this a little bit so that you can see in a moment what it all comes up to. And so my total area works out to be 20.375 units squared. How did I do that? Well, I just added all of these values here together. All right, so make sure that it was uh, nice. Now, that's brilliant. But what is the total area of that shape? How over is it? Well, it actually turns out that there's a great little function that you can use called integration, which you're coming to in later lessons that actually helps me work all of this stuff out. But I can tell you by using this funky piece of mathematics that the actual area under that curve is 18 units squared. So using this method here, that is a pretty massive overestimate, right? That's, that's quite a significant uh, chunk of being overestimate. So how could we make it better? Well, we already turned around earlier and said we could use trapezium. We could try and use uh, the midpoint method of the uh, rectangle to try and work out and sort of make it more accurate. We could actually learn the maths called integration that sort of works this for me. But another way to do this is, as I say here, it would make sense that the smaller the strips, the closer you would get to the actual area. We chose, scrolling, not to make you feel unwell, that uh, our interval in this situation was 0 0.5. So each of these boxes were the same width as 0 0.5. But we could have cut it in half and made them 0 0.25, for example. Or we could have cut them again and made them 0 0.125. All you're going to end up doing is just increasing the complexity of your calculations. But the thinner those strips get, the thinner the strips get, the closer and closer it gets to the actual answer. 
And that's sort of what integration is built on. It's, it's sort of finding infinitely narrow strips under curved graphs, or in fact, straight line graphs, to help us find us. Now, this exact area, I came up with a moment ago, the idea that the actual area was 18. And what I ended up doing was using this function here. It's called a definite integral. While we don't have to get too drawn into this, a definite integral suggests that if I put into my calculator the values 3, 0, x squared plus 3, dx, out would come the value of 18 units squared. Wow! Now, if we compare this to that, then this f of x was basically x squared plus 3. That's the function I'm looking to find the area under, which was my graph. Why did I come up with 0 and 3? Well, 0 and 3 were what we call the limits between which I wanted to find my area. I didn't want to find the area under the whole graph. That, that wouldn't help me in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to find the area between 0 and 3. And what is this dx? Well, I'll come back to that a little bit later on. But that's actually pretty much it for this lesson. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you uh, on the next uh, few, which deal with the great subject of integration. All right, take care. See you again. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed watching this video, why not tune in and subscribe to get updates of when I do other videos. Alternatively, click this video that's coming up now, or just zip on over to mathsguru.com, M-A-F-F-S, guru.com, where you can actually access all the videos in a nice, easy to use way.